I came back home, I told my mother, I said, you know, mother, I wouldn't take a million dollars from my experience. She said, son, what good would your experience ever do you? I said, maybe not, but you know what? I was sent overseas to save lives, not to destroy lives. And I said, mother, I've saved a many of them. And that's when I got to thinking, well, Uncle Jack wanted me to be a doctor, and I was a doctor for nearly a year or better. And, and it was really a, a good feeling, helping save some of the guys. I was called into the medical detachment, 406th Infantry, and took my basic with them. And then from there, I went on cadre to Camp Goober, Oklahoma, and helped train some other guys. And I made a medical technician and a surgical technician out of myself. I remember one instance that uh, we had had quite a few casualties and my boys in the aid station was all give out and was still working and I looked up and there come a, a lady in, looked like she's about eight months pregnant or better and uh, had a little girl hanging on to the side of her dress and her dress was bloody and she was holding her left arm with her right hand holding it and she was partly crying and the little girl was crying and carrying on and so I walked over to check them out and her left arm and the muscle part was nearly completely shot in two and just a ligament holding on. And uh, so we put her on the litter and gave her some morphine and decided what we could do about stopping the bleeding. And uh, it was a hard decision to make. But I finally took my bandage scissors and cut what was left of the holding the arm on and we dubbed it up and put sulfur drugs on it and stopped the bleeding and some of the other guys wrapped her arm up in a blanket with snow because there's about five or six inches snow on the ground and we loaded her into a hover jeep and carried her back to a civilian hospital and there luckily I found a doctor that could understand English and I told him what the deal was and he looked the situation over and, and said, well, I had saved her life by stopping the bleeding, and there was no way in the world that he could have saved the arm. Well, we was on the move real fast, and, and uh, the Germans had run out of gasoline. They was pulling a lot of their artillery by horses and mules and what have you, and we wasn't giving them much time to set up. It was cold, and snow was on the ground, it was snowing, and wind was blowing, and we uh, had heard about this prison camp, and we was headed that way, and we got to the prison camp dock out, and we could smell in the air this stench. and. Uh, what in the world, we couldn't figure out, and finally we got inside there and and uh, they captured the officers and all and come to find out they were cremating the prisoners and uh, they had buried so many prisoners there and all till they contaminated the water and uh, they were uh, cremating them. And, uh, but they didn't have enough ovens and they were stacked up like uh, cordwood. Nothing but skin and bones and people because they hadn't been feeding them. And, and uh, it put a sour taste or bad taste in every one of our mouths that anybody could treat another human being like they were treated there. And, uh, so we went into the barracks and opened them up and people was hugging us and bowing down, kissing our feet. And some of them wasn't able, it's a week and all, they wasn't able to do nothing but just kind of smile at you or raise a hand up. And uh, 
and made tears come in your eyes to see such stuff like that. And we took prisoners, what GIs did, until we run across their dockout and saw how the, the Germans had treated their prisoners. And so our GIs got a bad taste in their mouth and they uh, took very few prisoners after that. One time, we was told to take Hill 301 at the Doughboys were, and us medics had to be there, and we had casualties. And uh, we evacuated, or pulled out off the hill, casualties all night long, taking them back to the aid station because it took a long time to work our way down through the trees and what have you. And, it uh, was a long haul, and it was cold, so we took a break and had coffee and ate a bite and uh, it started back up and here come a lieutenant with a couple of GIs with a minesweeper and he stopped me and wanted to know what was going on. I asked him why he's stopping us, but I said, don't you hear them GIs up there hollering, hey doc? Hey, medic. And I said, uh, we've got a lot of wounded left up there. And he said, well, you can't go till we sweep the hillside. I said, Lieutenant, we've been going up and down that mountain off and on all night long. So you can't stop us now. And he said, well, you, you'll follow behind us after we clear. The Lord had been with us because where we had been walking, they found some mines. And it was a wonderful feeling and know that you saved somebody's life.